Good afternoon everybody, uh, my name is Dwight. Um, I'll be talking today about uh, how we upgraded the Joomla Gov uh, site from Joomla version 1.5.26 up to Joomla 2.5.4. Um, surprisingly enough, the, uh, the process wasn't really as, uh, as complicated as expected, but uh, before we get started, um, I'd also like to just run through a few, few stats with you and introduce you to uh, how the site's been performing over the last uh, year. Um, for those who don't know, we launched the site a year ago for JAB 2011, and uh, subsequently it's, um, it's, been, it's been running quite nicely. Um, uh, community's been getting involved and submitting a lot of, uh, a lot of new submissions. When we launched the site, we had, um, we had only 1,800 uh, listings. It's currently sitting on uh, 3,000, yeah, what's it, 124 odd? There we go. So that's, uh, that's quite a remarkable um, increase. Uh, I'm sure, sure there's a lot more sites out there running on, uh, on Joomla government sites. So um, if you know of any, please urge the people to submit their listings so we can, we can get a, a much bigger perspective on how many uh, sites are actually running on Joomla government sites. Really. Anyway, so to give you an idea, um, we're averaging probably around about five, five and a half thousand hits per month at the moment. Um, stats pretty much speak for themselves. Our biggest uh, traffic areas are the states. Surprisingly enough, Brazil came in at a second. Where they came from, I don't know. But, uh, and um, things that you don't actually see our language uh, was basically English. Majority, about six, just under 60 percent. So um, people, people from foreign countries are viewing the site. But the predominant language is, is still, in fact, English. So enough about uh, where we were and where we've come to. So um, the, uh, the, the growth in, 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 in traffic has obviously spurred on an idea for us to say, OK, well, let's, let's bring it on to the latest version of Joomla, because obviously uh, support or uh, security support, and that's going to drop for 1.5. Um, and of course, uh, the time is right now. To, to, everything's maturing for version 2.5. Yes? A little louder. OK. Can, Oh, sorry, that slips. Here we go. I'll, I'll bring that back up. Is that better? Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. I, okay, I'll speak louder. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right, so let's move on. Right, so, um, so coming back to the process, migrating the site from 1.5 to, to 2.5, um, it really wasn't as complicated as we'd expected. Um, there are a couple of uh, great extensions out there at the moment which make it a lot easier for the, for the migration. Um, in our case, we actually used um, the free component from Red Component, who's our main sponsor here today, so thanks, guys. Um, and the, the actual migration process, it took a little while because the, uh, the amount of data in, in the system, um, but it was pretty much seamless. Um, we, had, uh, um, we had to obviously install missing components that uh, Red compo Components didn't handle. Um, but uh, in our instance, we're actually running the majority of content through K2. So um, Red Component was kind, or yeah, J Upgrade was kind enough to actually port that across and upgrade it to the latest version of K2, and everything kept its own IDs and everything. So it actually was very, very, very smooth. Um, we did have to go in and rebuild build the menus, um, but that's a new feature I think in 2.5. So if you do have an issue with menus, not not uh, menu structure table not uh, rendering properly. There is a way to read build it. Okay. So that will save you a lot of headaches, especially when you're looking at 3,000 something odd records to go and, go and click in one by one and say, save, save, save. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, and of course, you have to troubleshoot and see what isn't working. Um, so all in all, the actual upgrade process was not as complicated as we had expected. So, um, so that process was, was fairly, fairly, fairly smooth. So and that's good news for everybody. If you can have a similar experience, then uh, it takes away a lot of headaches. 
Um, all right, so only real issue we had was the, the size of the, of the database and the media file and the cache file and so on. They were, uh, they were quite large because of the volume of content. So in some instances, many people like to work on, um, on a local host because it's uh, a lot quicker to develop. Uh, so if you have a, a large data set like that, you do tend to struggle to get all the data across if you need it. Uh, in some instances, you don't need the records because uh, maybe your design is simplified or, or for whatever other reason. So you can work without the data. Um, but in our case, we actually did port the data back just to make sure it was running 100%. Um, also partly because the system is mostly map-based. So uh, we needed the records to make sure the maps were running. OK, so um, moving on. The next phase was obviously upgrading the template. <laughs> we know a lot's changed in, in the templating world over the last uh, sort of two years, I would say rapidly in the last two years, with the introduction of HTML5, CSS3, or the adoption of HTML5 and CSS3. So we decided to uh, implement that as a, as a get-go. Um, so in order to do that, we had to change uh, a legacy code in the existing template because we had obviously predefined the template. We weren't going to make many template changes. So the idea was just to integrate the new code, um, bringing in the new HTML5 tags, um, and then, of course, uh, replacing things like, uh, I will sh show you the site a little later, uh, top bars where there was a gradient, for example, is now using CSS3 as a part from a, a graphic. So we've lightened the code by not having to load the graphics. Um, round corners are now possible, drop shadows, all that kind of thing. So CSS3, it's a winner. HTML5, well, um, that's a given. So, um, right, so backward compatibility. The issues we had is now what about IE6, IE7, and IE8? OK, now we all know Internet Explorer is our favorite browser. And uh, I'll be happy to say that on this specific project, um, Internet Explorer has got, actually got one of the lowest, um, uh, as an operating, as, as a browser, it's actually one of the, the, the lower figures. So it was, it, was, it was quite a pleasant surprise for us. Whether it's because we're all in the development community and everybody uses a proper browser, uh, which is probably the reason. <laughs> Alternatively, um, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, it's just a very, very low figure. So we were quite happy about that. Uh, we've also decided to make the change um, uh, because uh, to drop IE6 completely, so we don't cater for Internet Explorer 6 at all. Although you'd probably find a lot of this, the site would probably still function, but we've turned off, we've blocked IE6 basically. But to get around all the other problems, uh, there are always uh, patches and fixes and so on and so forth. So to get around the um, uh, the HTML5 factor, there's a JavaScript plugin just for IE. Um, to get around the CSS selectors, you've got uh, the Pi HTC, which is, uh, which is also very, very handy, useful. And then uh, to get around the pseudo classes in CSS3, we then use selector, selector visitor, or yeah, whatever you call that. And then for the responsive design, there's uh, respond. Okay. Um, right. So I'd also like to say at this point, by the way, if you have any questions, please fire them at me. I'll try and answer them. Um, and whoever's got an intelligent question might win a t shirt. <laughs> Someone over there is handing them out. Okay. Right, so now the next phase obviously is uh, bringing in the responsive element. Okay, so there's the whole chicken egg story again and why responsive. Um, well, as we all know, um, the way people view the web these days has changed uh, dramatically. So, I mean, how many different devices are in this room alone? Uh, you've got iPads, you've got iPhones, you've got. Um, tablets, you've got, you name it, it's, it's incredible. So, uh, so basically to cater for all these different uh, um, viewports, or we call screen resolutions, or we refer to as viewports, um, you have to consider the fact that the site might be viewed on a, on a smaller screen size and how is the site going to render in that instance. So the idea of responsive is, uh, basically the easiest way to describe it is it's a funnel. You take your de desktop version, all you're doing is you're funneling it down into a smaller view. So in, as you funnel it down, you actually remove elements or move things around. So your menus m might fall underneath the logo, for example, or it, you know, change the ordering slightly. Um, in theory, it should be easy to implement. In practicality, it's not as easy. Um, as, as with temp templating across the board, um, it does take time. So just uh, remember, if you are going to do it, uh, don't think it's going to be done in an hour or hour and a half. Uh, you're going to have to tinker a little bit. Um, right, so 
you've got to work out a strategy, you've got to work on the design, the coding, the testing, and the deployment. Those are your, your basic waterfall steps. Um, thanks to ReadWrite Magazine, I borrowed their graphic. <laughs> okay. um, right, so one of, the, one of the biggest issues is which way do you start uh, with, uh, with your um, design aspect? Uh, many people will say start with the, the smallest view and work your way up. Um, other people would say start with your final view and work your way down. Uh, again, it's, it's a chicken or the egg kind of situation. Um, I think in certain instances, if you're starting a project from scratch, you could probably do it from small view up. Um, but if you've got an existing site, you, you're probably having to do it the other way around. So um, again, if you're starting a project from scratch, it gives you a lot more leeway. If you're working with existing code, you are going to work a little bit harder. Okay. So in our instance, um, we had an existing template. Um, code had to be changed to accommodate. Um, there are a lot of frameworks out, out there that you can use. Oh, the frameworks, I mean, we've heard earlier on about uh, Bootstrap and there's, uh, there's grid systems. There's a lot of fantastic stuff that will automat automat automatically adapt, um, but they still have to be integrated into, you, into, you, into the CMS. So there is a bit of work involved. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, okay. I mentioned backward compatibility. Again, you're looking at your IE6, 7, and 8, which we covered with, with, with the extent, uh, bit of JavaScript plugins and so on. So they, they would be covered in there. OK. Um, right. OK, so the next phase is to decide which views are we actually going to cater for. I mean, there's how many devices are out there? There's a, there's a list of a couple. The list, I, I had to cut it off. <laughs> it actually goes on a bit further. Um, and those are just some of the devices. There's, and every day there's more coming out. So how do you decide which, which uh, screen or viewport sizes to cater for? Um, we, in the end, decided to go for 240, 320, 480, 768, and 1024. It's kind of a brief description of what they are. Um, most of our, according to stats, most, most of our, um, uh, uh, most, of the, most people viewing our sites on, on smaller devices was, was either Apple or iPad. So, um, and they do have a big market share. Uh, so it, it stands to reason that, uh, that that's pro probably what you should base it on. In terms of total stats, uh, it's probably only about less than 2% of the total views on the site were on smaller devices. So uh, was, it, was it really warranted going the responsive route? Staying ahead of the curve is always great. <laughs> so we believe so, yes. OK, so that's just to give you an idea of, uh, of different resolution times. OK, so when you get to the implementation stage, um, how do you now go ahead and test it on the different devices? Uh, it, we don't all own an iPad and an iPhone and, a, and whatever else it is, so it's, it's a bit difficult to, to see what it looks like in those views. Luckily, again, there are some awesome online tools um, that can help you. And then, of course, you can always uh, email a buddy and say, please, please open this up in your phone, tell me what it looks like, <laughs> and, uh, and then you should get a result. OK, so in this instance, I've made a, uh, a couple of links at the top there um, of uh, online tool, tools that will show you the diff different viewport sizes. So in this instance, you can see the, um, how the view changes from the 1024, sorry, more from the 768 to the 480 view. Um, it actually does drop the, the world, comes above the, uh, what's the name? Unfortunately, I didn't scroll down. Um, other tips and tricks to help you um, to get through um, some of the tricks. Uh, you can use JavaScript. Uh, there's a breakpoint JavaScript which basically uh, detects where your uh, your viewport size is at, and then it can figure off, a, uh, sorry, fire off a JavaScript action or, or, uh, at that point. So if you want to do, for example, add a, a, an ID or a class to an element in your HTML, you could use um, you could use the breakpoint JS to do that. Uh, I've done that on the home page of the world because I had a a block that was uh, in content that was a uh, 50%, 50% width now when you get to the smaller sizes I needed to, to drop it. Could have been done in CSS with just an ID on it. Um, but in this case, I actually chose to use the JavaScript for a bit of fun. So why we did it, don't ask. OK. <laughs> right. Um, how do we achieve? Yes? Sorry, but do, you, do you use any or suggest any live testing tools? Um, well, online, yeah. Um, the, in this instance, you actually put a URL in at the top of the um, of the thing, and you can actually navigate the site so you get each page. But you can't nav navigate through the through the each individual pane. 
So it'll give you that page that you put the URL in for. So you're not actually navigating through the site, but you could navigate by using the different URLs. So you can essentially view, view each page. Um, the pages in these viewports are um, are are live, but you can't um, you can't navigate through it. It, it, it doesn't allow the navigation. Um, okay, so what else was there? Okay, so to come back to how we actually achieved. <laughs> An intelligent question. If if you actually wanted to do a proper live testing, I'll I'll. I'll there is one way. Uh, Adobe's brought out something called, is it called Shadow? What is it called? Yeah. Yeah, it's called Shadow, which actually, it, it networks all, all your devices, but you physically have to have the devices then. And then what it is, as you navigate on the one device, it, it mimics that on all the other devices. So as you navigate the one, it navigates on all the others for you. Connects to your desktop, mm -hmm. so from your desktop, so if you've got an iPhone and an iPad, it'll connect all three devices together, and as you navigate from one link to another, it changes on the other devices. Very, very cool. I haven't tried it personally, so um, anyone who does, please let me know how it goes. Okay. Um, all right, so now to, uh, to get to the nuts and bolts of it, how do we actually achieve the, um, the actual different uh, layouts uh, for the responsive? Now, it's actually fairly, fairly simple. It's done use, using, uh, uh, using media queries. So what it basically means is in your style sheet, you set a media query and say, if um, the viewport size is greater than or less than a certain size, display this. Okay, so that's pretty much what's happened. So as the viewport changes, then, you, then your, your CSS kicks in for that specific view. Now, in, in our instance here, what I've done is I've added additional style sheets um, for each viewport because I haven't repeated the entire style sheet. I've only added the, the, new, the new styles for the different views. So the style sheets for the different views are actually quite light. It's just changing widths, um, little bits here and there. We haven't gone overboard and changed colors or anything like that. It's mostly just layout. So we've just changed your, your widths. And, uh, Is good. there uh, a reason you chose to do that over using a responsive CSS, or responsive JavaScript where you can set different classes? Um, well, the idea was, OK, you can, you, can, um, you can use a JavaScript which does, well, there's a, a JavaScript file out there called adapt.js. If you search for that, you'll find it. What it does, it'll only load uh, the CSS file for that view. But what that would mean is I'd have to repeat my entire um, style sheet with it. Oh. You make sense. So, so with the media query, it's only calling in a very, very small, small um, style sheet, which is just overriding widths and heights, or whatever the case may be. So it, it, it's, it, it's, it really is that simple. Matthew's going to give you a t-shirt for an intelligent question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks. Um, I haven't used Breakpoint JS, but I'm interested to know, do you have a, a, a Node.js no fallback? And if so, I mean, if JavaScript can't load, and if so, do you fall back to a, a desktop view? Or a yes, it'll always revert back to the to desktop view. Desktop is default, uh, and to, get, to, get, to give an idea, um, part of the problem is the ordering of the style sheets. So what I've had to do is I've had to make sure that the responsive style sheets load last. So my ma main template style sheet loads first, and then your media query um, uh, adjusted temp style sheets load after that. So it's very important in that regard. You have to have, to have the, the, the ordering correct. If you don't, you're going to be in trouble. Um, yeah, but as I said, once the, in theory, you should be able to include your, um, your media query uh, files into your main file. You just also then just... Um, but it gets quite complicated. It does get quite complicated from a management point of view. So it probably is better to separate the files out. But again, whoever works, everyone works differently. So there's no right, there's no wrong. It's, it's, a, it's a preference. Um. <laughs> hey, don't take all my t-shirts. <laughs> I've got nothing to wear for the rest of the week. <laughs> OK, let me move on. Um, OK, so I did mention Adapt.js in there. So you can, you can have a specific style sheet. But then you'd have to include your entire site um, style sheet. In that, so which means you'd actually have to update update that if there was a change across all the other ones. Whereas your your media query is only one. One thing you'll notice on the design is that I don't think Dwight got to it quite. The last time he did the code was the day before he flew. So <laughs> you'll see that it's, it's still government websites. It's, a, it's an H1, which is the same size across all the devices. It should actually change per device and become smaller. Yes, it can still be set. It's we just didn't, we don't have time. Okay, um, what else was there? 
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I ran out of time. <laughs> um, I'll tell you where there, where there were issues, okay, which is a, a huge uh, point of discussion at the moment in, in terms of responsive, okay, is you've got uh, video embedding and image embedding. Okay, now what happens is because you're on a mobile de device, you actually don't want to load um, the large size version of the, of the image. So you, ideally you'd like a switch in to say, okay, if it's this view, load the smaller image. Because at the moment what we've done is we've just scaled the image down. Um, so you're still loading the full image. So if you happen to view the site on, on, on a mobile device, you're still loading the desktop version of the, of the image. So there are ways to, to, to get around that, but the implementation is quite tricky, especially if you're looking at it in terms of Joomla. Or in, in our case, we're actually using K2, and K2 generates four, four different, uh, or five different sizes of the same image. So we actually want to tap into that rather than have um, a plugin that generates new images um, and then loads it from a different location. So again, now you've got the problem, you're actually having multiple versions of the same image in different places on the site, which you don't really want to do. So in our case, we've actually left it. Um, we'll revisit it later. Um, I'll mention something toward the end of the talk in terms of forward thinking, what we might do uh, as an alternative to responsive design, but I'll, I'll get that later. I must change the slide, I'm not sure what's next. Okay, all right, so yeah, what's next? <laughs> so. Um, so to come to, to the end there, uh, we've also added a whole bunch of new performance enhancements. Um, Matthew's worked quite hard on, on, on the caching side of things, so we've added in a, a new com uh, a component called Jot Cache, which is apparently working quite well. Um, it's quite aggressive on the caching, and we've managed to increase the speed on the, the main, uh, main map overview page with all the markers on it. Um, by 70%, so it's been a huge increase in size. On average, we're on slower conne connections abroad. It was taking seven to 10 seconds to lo load the page. There's, it's loading 3,000 odd records, so it does take a while. Um, it's now come down to about two and a half seconds. So it it's really has cut the, the load speed down completely. Um, also, the, the act uh, actual code on the, um, on the t new templating has been reworked, so it is a lot lighter as well. There's less overrides and, and so on and so forth. Um, we've also, haven't finalized it or completed it, but we're looking at uh, compressing the CSS compressing, uh, combining, so combining all the CSS files into one. Um, what it basically does is it takes all your CSS files and just merges them into one in the same order that they were in, in the header. So that's quite cool. Um, Jotcache has been kind enough to actually strip out all the white space in the HTML and so on, so that the, the code itself is also nicely bunched up, uh, hard to read <laughs> if you view it. Um, and yeah, so going forward, we might also consider looking at, as opposed to, question? I want to make a note on the compression, though. I think we actually have a Google Summer of Code project, is that right? Is that okay? There's a Google Summer of Code project that is going to work with uh, compressing CSS files into one file, and it's going to be the framework. So uh, that should be supporting it soon. Fantastic, that's great news. That is awesome. Okay, and will they still have the defer as well, or is that also going to be kicking in, or? I don't know. Don't know. Okay. Okay, well that's interesting, that's, that's great news. <clears throat> okay, uh, I mentioned earlier on something about a, a, a possibly an, an alternative to, to responsive design um, would be, uh, it's a new buzzword again, it's adaptive design. Okay, it's, um, what it basically means is uh, you get to a point where your viewport resizes and then what happens is your browser loads a, a new template. Um, implementation into Joomla would probably be a little more tricky because you'd have to do probably an Ajax call. Um, but what that would mean is you could physically build an entirely new view um, with its own style sheets and everything, which I think is, 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 a, is probably a better way to do it because then you get more flexibility. In a way, it's almost like uh, building an app. But uh, you could then change your menu structure completely. Uh, you could introduce complete, completely different layouts per, per, per view. Um, it's an option. It's something that I think everyone's going to move towards in the long term. But responsive is an intermediate step. It's great. You have to cater for it. And I think maybe it's a long term. Uh, again, but now you're having to look at four different templates, five different templates. So the workload is your choice. <laughs> okay. Um, and then maybe at some point in the future, you might look at doing a mobile app where you can, can submit uh, listings and so on and all that kind of thing. But again, it's... Uh, uh, it is pretty much a voluntary project uh, spearheaded by a group of us. Yes? Oh, with, with, with submitting content, so on your homepage there, your responsive design was mainly just shifting around content. Correct. Um, but specifically with submitting content, did you ever 
hide that function as you, functionality as you got to smaller designs? We uh, no, we just uh, we just. Did you ever, in general, did you, did you ever use the instead of just shifting it around? Did you hide anything? We actually hit. We actually hit nothing on the site. We have one or two issues still on the site. We haven't. We haven't quite resolved because um, uh, there's inline styling being int introduced by JavaScript, which we haven't quite uh, uh, grabbed yet to to de deactivate or or uh, uh, found a workaround yet for that. Sorry, it was. We ran out of time literally, so we will find a solution. It's just we haven't found it yet. And so, <laughs> um, so there was that, and then uh, there was a couple of JavaScript conflicts, um, which which was causing issues with, uh, with validation and things like that, which have now been pretty much resolved. Um, I think, let me actually load the site for you, um, so you can, okay, well, let me, yeah, I'll load the site for you quickly. Uh, yeah, sorry, I should have had that up, shouldn't I? Okay, so let's see. So that's your home page now. Um, now, as I mentioned earlier, the um, the explore page is the page that actually loads all the map markers. So that's that's three thousand odd records being loaded there. Let's see. I haven't cached it or anything, so it's the first time I'm loading it on this PC, I think. And it's going very fast. Okay, <laughs> always in a live demo. Never do it live. Um, well, that will load in a, in a in a in about a half an hour or so. Yeah, no, the internet here might be dodgy. Everybody's testing this right now. I am, and the, the world images. Yeah, yeah sorry, I, I've got to just add a CSS in on that, sorry. Um, it, it is, uh, requires a little more testing, but essentially it works. Let me just grab the... Uh, is it actually loading? Let me just see if I can do this in the meantime. Connected. I don't know if I'm. Oh, that's what I'm, I'm not even getting to the other page. Okay. Well. Okay. Here we go. We get some movement. <laughs> All right, just to come back to the, the, the forms and stuff. So the, what we did here was, um, that's your, uh, that's your uh, the, the submission form, which has got uh, basically a Google Map integrator. You drag your marker and it changes your lats and longs to make it a little bit easier because obviously the, um, it's map driven. So we needed to, to get lats and longs for the map generation. We decided to go that route rather than geolocation because uh, people often make mistakes on addresses. Um, which is quite nice. It also outputs your uh, your near, nearest location there as well, so at the top. So hopefully you can get quite close to your your actual location. Um, and then this would then scale down as you as you do the response. If it drops the right column down to the bottom, and then if you go further, it then drops again. So that would that would show you. Yes. Why would you need a mobile app for submission? Um, well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. Um, <laughs> it's going to probably touch a little bit on what Matthew's, Matthew's talk uh, on Sunday. Um, a lot of the government sites, well, oh, haven't been listed yet, but we've got a feeling that there's probably a lot more in Africa than we know about. Um, and the African market really is far, far greater. It's the fastest grow, growing mobile market in the world. So we're probably going to look at, at um, uh, you'll probably get a higher, higher success rate from a, a mobile uh, app submission point of view there, I think, and also it's just it's a handy tool. It's just a bit of a bit of a, a bit of bells and whistles and flash, you know. What I mean? So you can show people, yeah, we can do this. So yeah, but uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Did you get it? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> we think it's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, okay. Yes, I need to sort that I've set specified the um, 
the width but not the height, so I'll sort that out. It's just a CSS, it's a CSS tweak. I'll, I'll sort that out, sorry guys. It was fine on the, uh, on the online uh, thingy, I hadn't actually got around to checking it on there. Um, okay, uh, so basically there's your, um, that's your what we call well, the category view, um, and we also drill down, I hope the speed's fast enough, if you have to drill down into say countries you then get a, a, like a sitemap view of all the countries, and then from there, there you can then click through to, I don't know, a Okay, well I hope you have got one. There you go. So Mongolia, and then you get your list, and then there's your, uh, the map marker, which will then bring up a uh, the title, the thumbnail image, um, and then obviously links at the bottom, read more, visit the website. We'll take you through then to the, to the actual, the article view. Um, yes? Sorry, come again? Yes, uh, we seem to be getting uh, mixed, mixed, uh, mixed, mixed uh, results in the, uh, the pop-ups, but I will address that at, at some point, yes. Probably set a fixed height or whatever the case may be. Um, again, it's, it's just a bit of tweaking. And let us call again. Uh, and let us call again. Uh, we, we plan to take uh, the uh, top bar out, the top bar, and we see the, uh, the top bar and the top bar. Yeah. And then we'll go to the CSS read rate on the top of the second plane. Then down just to see the entire map. Okay, so then uh, coming to the article page, this is, this is then your, um, your item view. Uh, you got the map and a bit of developer information and so on and so forth. Um, if you see yeah. the state, we, we do insist on the update this page button. So go and update the page. If you see a thing in Germany that should be in Chile or whatever, so update it, please. Two, just two, two things. What we've actually done um, what was quite... Uh, what was quite uh, to keep maintenance down on the site, because remember, it's mostly voluntary that's, that's running this. And because you can get, get up to, I don't know, 60, 70, 70 submissions a week, the submit form actually submits direct, directly to the DB. So it actually creates the record in K2, and all we have to do is review it and publish it. Um, the update form, on the other hand, uh, is, is a manual process. We haven't quite um, managed, managed to hook the, uh, the item ID up with the, with the database record. Uh, again, it's just, it's just about time. I'm sure we'll get to it at some point. but. Uh, at the moment, that's currently how it works. Um, anyway, so that's your, that's your article view. And then just to show you the responsive on that as well, if we want to have a look. Um, I'll just keep it about there. And as you zoom in, it obviously then changes. And the image is obviously resizing with it. OK. So, so that is working. Uh, my apologies if it's not 100%. I, I did run out of a little bit of time. So a few more tweaks. But it's, um, but it's, it's pretty impressive so far, right? <laughs> I'm looking for validation. <laughs> OK. Um, OK, so uh, and, then, and then in closing, um, how am I doing on time? I've got loads of time, or have I? Oh, I've still got time. OK, then I'll have to take questions. Um, all right, I just want to do in closing. Well, we can ask, we can have a question session, or maybe. We also wanted to just um, obviously thank um, everyone in the community that contributed. We, uh, we actually reached out to the community um, this time to make it possible for us to actually attend this event. Because um, we, we've attended the event in the past, but it, it, it's, it's quite a costly affair, as anyone knows. And we've traveled all the way from, from South Africa. Um, um, some people have traveled further than us, uh, we, we granted. But uh, uh, we decided to, to come out and do a presentation as well. Um, and uh, we got the idea from Peter from No Number to, uh, to do a chip-in uh, chip account, and uh, the community actually contributed a large sum. We didn't quite reach our quota. We were a little bit short, but we got 80%, 87% of, um, of, our, of our ask, which was enough to get us here. We don't know how we're getting back, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but thank you very much. So there's a list of, of everyone that, that, that made this possible, and uh, you know, a big heartfelt warm thank you for making it possible for us to, to come here and, and present. So um, yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> we've got a few minutes. We've got a few more T-shirts, I think. Okay. <laughs> Does anyone else have a, anyone else had experience uh, with with responsive design? Has anyone tried it? And how have, how have you found the implementation? Have you? Uh, I'm Seth. One of my Seth. Oh, please meet you. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I did find that it was it was a lot of t a lot of time spent um, uh, testing, which probably wouldn't have been necessary had. Um, but we were, as I said, we were loaded. We were. I was. I started off with a, with a, with a, an existing template, so I just basically adapted it as we went along. It would probably have taken, as you say, the same amount of time to build it from scratch and actually actually right. s start. Yeah. Um, I think, um, one of the things I think we've learned about this is um, check the stats in your site. Check what devices are being used on your site and target those devices. There's no point targeting viewports which people aren't coming in on. And then you can target those later if you need to, but you need to start off somewhere. And that's probably a good way to check your stats out and then take it from there. It is a lot of work. Dwight spent a lot of hours doing this. Sure. And yes. Yeah, now that, it, with anything with templating is going to take you time. So, uh, uh, you're going to quote to clients? Yeah, put a big budget on that one. Well, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I would say yes. You, you, you kind of get a grasp of it, and, and it, it's, it's a lot easier once you've done two or three implementation, I'd say. To be honest, this is actually our, our first response of implementation, so it has been a bit of a steep learning curve, dabbling with all, all sorts of, uh, you know, odds and sods, you know, making the mistakes, learning from them. Um, and you've obviously had more experience, so it's, it's interesting to hear uh, your approach. Uh, would you also start from the desktop view down, or would you go from, hey? Yeah, go up. You go up, okay, yeah, right. Okay. And are you also using uh, Job, JavaScript extensively to help you along the way? Yeah? No. Almost, almost not. Almost not. No. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I was using Respond. Okay. Modernizer, but, you know, I, I just, I just you know, redid my, my framework template and now we can run JavaScript free. Okay, cool. So, are you, um, how are you coming in, uh, getting around the IE issue with the, uh, with the media queries? Sorry? How are you getting around the IE issue with the media queries? Oh, okay. If you, if you come with a 10 dollar browser, you're going to get a 10 dollar experience. <laughs> 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 My love lost there. <laughs> to watch a, a, you know, a 3D movie on a live screen on a 14 inch black and white. Yeah, huh? that's, that's a nice yeah, way to so paint it. get all the content, typography, and it's a, it's a nice reading experience, yeah. but they get part of it rather than. You can't expect the same view when you have on a live browser. Yeah, it's not worth it. You can't recover that. And I, I, a long time ago, I used to use Pi as well. Okay. And you're just trying to fix it. Yeah, yeah, you're back with compatibility. And another question, just uh, just off the bat, I'll get to you in a second. The um, in in terms of marketability, have you found found that there's a market for it? Have you have you started punting that yet, or has it just been uh, an add-on service to existing clients? I'm just I, I build. Okay. I don't the template, so okay. I don't sell it. It's my default position. Every client gets responses. It's the way of the forward. It's the way of the future. Yeah, and I don't find it any, any harder now. Okay. It, it's, a, it's a steep learning curve, but once it is your default position, then. Fair enough. Roll it up. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Yes. I thought there was a connection between two things that were said here. One is you get a ten year old browser, you get a ten year old experience. The other was see who your visitors are, who you're building for. Yeah. So if you've got point one uh one percent you know people are coming in on IE might be IE six or IE seven, do you care that they get an awful experience? Probably well, I mean you might care about this ten people versus your million people, it's probably irrelevant in the grand scheme. Yeah. Yeah, a classic. Because <laughs> of the network uh, integration, I think there's a whole thing with that. There, there is uh, just. British, I think, 
j just to give you an idea, we actually also did work on, uh, we did a presentation two years ago here on the World Health Organization site, which we built. And that is actually, they insisted on, on having backward compatibility up to IE 5.5, because they're dealing with a lot of African uh, countries and they don't, they don't have, they literally have that 14 inch green screen <laughs> and an IE 5.5. So it is, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it's in some cases, you might require it, but then it will be specified in the, in the job, uh, in the job spec anyway. So, uh, yeah, if you have to, you, you you spend the time. But if you don't have to or you don't want to, then you know, why waste your time? Yes. Now, question: um, Do you, when you um, pull for jobs from the clients, if they have those, you know, I would say um, exotic browsers, the old <laughs> internet and stuff, do you do you try and price those out? It would it would normally it normally be an additional cost because it is it is uh, over and above um, what you would normally do. So you kind of kind of factor it in you know, on an hourly rate and just say, well, it's probably going to take me I don't know 10, 12, 14 hours, whatever to do this, and then just just load that or load it on the price. Um, but again, it, it's job spec, so they would have to specify it on the onset. They can't come halfway through and then say, oh, oh by the way, it doesn't work in IE5. Uh, again, I think you also need to be firm in your terms and conditions and make sure that you, you say, we don't cater for, because else you could end up get, getting shot in the foot and someone says, well, does, I opened it in my browser and it doesn't work. Then what? Okay, so uh, any other questions before I... <laughs> yes? So uh, during the upgrade from 1.5 to 2.5, yes. how did you do, uh, for example, the upgrade of the, of the K2 component? Did you do the... the no, the actual um, uh, J upgrade handled that completely. It actually upgraded K2 and you, ported everything across. You it. Had a version uh, 2.4.1 on the 1.5 or you did uh, the 2.5 version for that? Um, I think we were already running 2.5. Two five six, yeah. Yeah. So we always, we always, we were, we were quite risque. I must be honest. We we actually launched the site on an SVN version of K two. So just so you know. <laughs> so and then we've also taken leaps of faith and, and often just hit the update button and see what happens. Uh, luckily, uh, hat off to Fotis and the boys. It, it has been a pr pretty solid um, CCK as far as CCKs go. So um, uh, we've we're quite grateful for the. Um, for the uh, you know, f for the tool, so uh, yeah, it's it's risky sometimes, but uh, you know, no risk, no reward. <laughs> okay. So all in all, yes, the upgrade process wasn't that hard. The responsive implementation was time-consuming, and it was a big learning curve. There's a lot still to be learned, um, as as you can see. Uh, I'm I'm surprised that uh, well, because I'm not surprised that not so many many people have adopted it yet. So, but you probably see it's a growing trend. Uh, again, you also have to weigh, weigh up the fact whether or not you're going to use uh, frameworks like, uh, you know, uh, grid systems and things like that. You can implement, but uh, yeah. are you making yourself your life simpler or harder? That's also a question. Building from the ground up is probably your best solution, in my opinion. Yep. I've heard a lot of complaints about J upgrade in the community, and uh, I'd like to hear from, from the audience uh, if, if and uh, what experience they have. Okay. Has has anybody in the audience used either of those components for upgrading? Both. Okay. And both. And both. J upgrade. J upgrade. Okay. Those of you that use both, uh, what was your experience like? Let's start with. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I felt my migration with the, with the SP upgrade, but J upgrade managed to do most of the business. I had to do like a menu, 
and for example, for the, for the K2 categories, okay. uh, it didn't pick up the, the, for example, inheritance of the parameters. Yes. So I have to go in each, in each and every one and then uh, apply inheritance and, uh, and but everything else actually wants more. So I was actually a little bit surprised. Okay, so your, your experience with J-Upgrade was better than SP or but much of a muchness. Well, okay. well, but I must say, if, if like a couple of times it, it failed, like it, it timed out Ta okay. or, or something like that. Or Like it just, just running, not, nothing, nothing else happening. Okay. We, uh, so you're trying to try it again? Or yeah, we had a similar experience. I actually tried, tried again and, and eventually succeeded, okay. but with the SP library, I, I wasn't able to, then maybe I'll have to try a couple more times. We okay. <laughs> used both J jQuery and SP library on, on many sites. I think we upgraded about 30 or 40 sites using either one of those tools to do either one. I'm not quite sure how the jQuery client is out there. Out there a lot. Uh, it, was a lot it was out there before it's being upgraded, so it was used a lot more. And of course, there is a problem you're going to hear more complaints about. That's about the only thing I could think of. Because, I, I, like you were saying, I've seen just as many problems with SP upgrade as J upgrade. Neither one of them are perfect, and there's a lot more thought process that needs to go into your site than saying, oh, I'm going to upgrade and upgrade. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. You know, you do need to go through a process of making sure that, you know, Everything is compatible. I mean, JFRE handles K2 and K2 is compatible, but when you have one, it's not. You know, and I think that's where a lot of complaints come from the people that don't think it through before they start. But I've, I've seen just as good of JFRE as SPF Yeah, but how the many? One, the one drawback is, I don't, uh, if I'm correct, and, I, and it's been a couple, been about a month since I've done uh, any upgrades, is I believe JFRE uses curl, so you can't like test it on a local host or something like that unless you have that specifically enabled, or maybe you can't test it on a shared host or something like that. So there is that potential limitation. Okay, so when we did the upgrade of this one, we did both the SP upgrade and JFRE on the live site. Mm -hmm. And then it's upgraded and put it in its own folder, and then we downloaded that entire system and then put it on local host. Yeah, so that, that was a process. Um, we, we had an issue with SP upgrade wasn't great. It, it, it didn't bring all, all the, um, the menus and everything were broken and, and, and it was horrible. So then we tried, we tried J upgrade and it worked uh, much better. We had to rebuild the menu as I mentioned, but um, that was just a one click. So it's, it's not like it's a train smash. Um, <laughs> okay, well, everybody, thanks for uh, attending my talk. Uh, <laughs> I hope you, hope you gleaned some knowledge. <laughs>